Hi and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be going through the dueling of a Seiko 6139. I'm not going to call this a tutorial because that would be presumptuous of me in the fact that I have never actually done the barrel arbors on a 6139 yet. So you will be joining me on a voyage of discovery, as it were. And while the procedure is quite straightforward and the requirements, having not done a 6139 or a 6XXX uh, series myself personally yet, then I'm not going to presume that I know all the best methods of, uh, of going ahead and doing this, but hopefully some people will find this useful. I've had quite a few people ask me about this, so I've decided to do this separate little video on dueling. I will be including the basics of the dueling in the Pogue service video, um, the second part of the service video, as it were. As you can see here, we've got the main plate with the balance bridge still attached. That, of course, will be removed for the dueling process. This has just been refitted um, as habit as I do for the cleaning process um, because I once I strip the movement I always refit the balance bridge before it goes through the cleaning machine. Down here is the um, the barrel arbor hole that's going to be jeweled with the smaller of the two. With the smaller of the two jewels that you see here, these are from VTA, Vintage Time Australia, uh, Adrian who runs that. Uh, very nice fella. And these are really, really good quality. They're not the cheapest thing in the world, but to try and put things into perspective, this is a once in a lifetime job. These will outlast, short of physically damaging them, these will outlast pretty much the rest of your movement. Um, there are numerous other parts that will wear and break before these will. Um, as I say, provided you don't actually physically damage them. This is the lower barrel arbor that fits into that hole there and then the upper one which is slightly larger uses a steel bushing. I'm going to zoom in close so you can take a good look at those. Here we are up close and there's the lower on the main plate and this wears because it's just plated brass. So being softer than the hardened steel of the barrel arbor the force of the mainspring over the years of pushing this wears it into an oval shape and allows the barrel arbor to have play and slop, which robs the movement of power. So this hole needs to be reamed out and this is the tricky bit because it has to be very precise and accurate and straight. So that's going to be quite a nerve wracking bit, especially as I'm going to be trying to film this for the first time. I was actually going to do this on my own 6139, which has slightly worse wear, uh, well, quite a bit, but much, much worse wear, let's be honest, than this particular one does. It's really not as bad as, uh, as some. Um, but the owner has much more confidence in my abilities than I do, I think. And he has said he's quite happy for me to go ahead. So we're going to go ahead. And this will be the very first one I've ever done on camera. So um, I'm not at all nervous. Thank you. Um, so at the risk of owing him a main plate, we're going to go ahead and do that. The easier of the two we'll be doing first, which is this one, because this just involves pressing out the steel bushing and replacing it, pressing in the uh, synthetic ruby, the jewel that you can see there. This one will need to be reamed with a 1.6 millimeter reamer after being centered and uh, checked for straightness and level. It will need to be reamed out to size and then the um, both sides gently deburred because obviously if you have little burrs they can catch and prevent your jewel from pressing in smoothly at which point the jewel can be pressed into place so it sounds straightforward let's hope it's um, it's as straightforward as it sounds so what i'm going to do is set up the um, a second camera probably my phone pointing in this way so that um, you'll be able to see the dueling tool down here and, uh, and the process as it happens. Here on the bench, we've got the dueling tool. This is a favorite brand dueling tool. We've got the uh, original booklet up there, as you can see with 
the uh, bits and bobs on and in here we've got the dueling tool itself with its handle the uh, favorite and horia are the two very well known ones of the swiss makers that you will encounter uh, the horia doesn't come with the with a handle like this but that's not um, a negative in any way shape or form the actual use and operation of both remains exactly the same you have this plunger here it's just with the horia tool you would just use you just plunge it by hand up there whereas this just gives you another option you could still use it by hand without this handle but you can also use this handle and what I like about this is it only takes fingertip pressure to use we have a set of stumps and a set of pushers along here you can see that there are some missing we've got a couple of spade drill bits these are for deburring the hole after it's been reamed and then we've got some spare collets over here for this which is to hold the reamers a selection of reamers along here and then some more stumps and pushers over here the, the pushers over here are brass and these stumps are specifically for use in hand setting they have a little recess and they're much much smaller than any of these other stumps and these are for supporting the jewel and the um, the upper pivots when hand setting on chronographs and the like and of course the brass pushers are to um, to minimize the risk of marking the hands when setting them which is a handy little accessory here you've got a couple of tables these two would typically be used in conjunction this one to clamp the part and then the appropriate hole to ream through and then this one over here which is my favorite and this is the one that i would ordinarily use for doing something like the main plate because this allows you this has three adjustable jaws as you can see they slide in and out and they swivel from side to side and this allows you to clamp a part from uh, as large as a full main plate to as small as the smallest bridge or uh, something like a balance cock and this allows you to clamp it dead flat so that you're guaranteed to be able to ream straight down and true uh, very very useful that one however in this case we're going to be using this stump here which is a 600 that refers to the 600 millimeter diameter outer diameter and that fits perfectly um, which I happen to know from watching um, VTA's video because he uses I believe the same I think it's the same set that he has and this fits perfectly the little indentation on the main plate of the 6139 which I will show you when we get around to doing that and reaming that in preparation for the jewel so it allows it to be held dead flat and it also has the added benefit of making sure that the hole is perfectly centered because if the hole is badly ovaled there's always a risk of reaming it slightly off center um, again that's where this is handy because you can make tiny tiny little adjustments by sliding it before clamping everything tight uh, but that should theoretically make the job a bit easier this is the reamer that we will be using for this particular job it's a 16 which refers to 1.6 millimeters it's actually 1.59 millimeters at its widest diameter which is here and that's the smooth round burnishing section of the uh, of the reamer what you've got is a cutting brooch and a smoothing brooch in one um, quite a clever design in fact you can buy brooches quite readily and easily but this particular design for the favorite is a five-sided cutting brooch tapered so that you cut straight down and true and enlarge the hole gradually and then as you get right to the very top you actually continue into the rounded section and this actually smooths the the hole that you've broached so you've got a combination cutting and smoothing brooch that's held in this here with the collet and you've got some spare collets there of different sizes um, if you used different reamers for example and then this is actually used in conjunction with the tool you remove the stump here which holds the pushers you put this in and this keeps it straight and true and allows you to ream a perfectly straight hole now i just want to advise um sorry i just want to apologize at this point because this video is going to be a bit longer than i originally intended but what i decided i wanted to do was to show in as much detail as i possibly can 
the general use of a dueling tool for reaming and, and fitting a jewel. Here on the better quality camera, just to explain better the, um, the brooch or the reamer, which is a combination cutting and smoothing brooch. Uh, you can see here, this is the size 16, which is in reality a full diameter of 1.59 millimeters, not 1.6, to allow for a friction fit of the jewels. That's deliberate, and that will be the same with any one, uh, any 16 or 1.6 reamer, uh, or any variant of. So 1.8 will be 1.79, and so on. And the uh, I'm just going to scoot in close so you can see the the way that this is set up. You can see the size stamped into the handle there. All of them are sized. These are the ones that come with the favourite dueling tool and the uh, I like these particularly because of the design. If I hold this up and focus for you, you can see that this is a five-sided cutting brooch. Um, and or a five-pointed cutting brooch, kind of like a Chrysler, it's a Chrysler logo. You American guys will be able, one of you American guys in the comments will be able to tell me. I think it's Chrysler that has a logo like that, but it's five-sided. Now your typical hand use reamers um, or cutting brooch will be four-sided. The the ones that you you will buy in, in packs of four or five of general sizes and some are even less. Um, it, it just depends. They all do the same job ultimately, but I do particularly like these. I think these are rather nice. And you'll see, obviously, it tapers as all reamers and cutting brooches do. They start at uh, a fairly narrow point and they taper upwards to their full diameter at this point. And then this section here is also the exact same diameter across as this is across the flats across the cutting faces not sorry not the flats the cutting points rather and this round section is in itself in and of itself a smoothing brooch so that's that in detail I just wanted to show that up close for you here you've got the tool you've got the pusher tube which you can think of as a stake which has a hollow in the end to accept the pushers and a spring that you can see in that slot there. We've got the return spring for the pusher tube and then the micrometric adjustment here. Each line represents 0.1 uh, is, and the micrometric adjustment here, each uh, increment on here representing one hundredth of a millimeter. Here you've got a locking screw so that once you've set this, just in case there's a risk of knocking it, you can tighten that up and then there's no chance of knocking that and altering the adjustment. Here is a plunger and the other side is a matching plunger. These have a little, arrow, a little notch in the middle which you can use to align the marks as you turn that like so. That fits in there. The handle slots onto there and then, oops, and then hooks over like so and so what I do like about this is while you're holding the part on here, for example, you can use this with quite literally with fingertip pressure. Whereas with the Horia tool, you can do the same kind of thing, but I don't feel personally that you get quite as much fine control because you have to physically press it like so. You can also do that with this one. Um, it's not a deal breaker thing. It's just uh, a particular thing that I like about this set. So, in the case of the Seiko, we'll be using this particular stump, which sits in there like so. It's hollow, as you can see, which allows the cutting brooch to pass through. We will be using the cutting smoothing brooch holder, first and foremost. So, first thing we do is remove these and we can fit this into here and then with the plate held in place like so and the cutting brooch in place it can then be turned bit by bit by bit by bit until it works its way right the way through and that should then have cut us a perfectly straight and true hole 
sized for the jewel. We've now got the tool set up. I'm just trying to sort of fiddle my hands in here so that you can, uh, so that I'm not knocking the tripod that the phone is on. And this is the barrel stroke train bridge. And that's the bushing that we're going to be using the pusher to push out. This is a 240 pusher. This, um, this bushing is, um, I believe it's about 250, um, 2.5 mil or 2.45 mil or thereabouts, um, which I will double check in a moment. And uh, we're going to push that out from the underside and we're going to push the jewel in from the upper side so as you can see I've got the hollow stump there and I've got this set up so that it will only push as far as the flat section of of that um, and that's been adjusted or the micrometric setting settings at the top there so I'm going to line this up like so and if you'll excuse me one moment I need to get my loop and just make sure that I am perfectly aligned because I don't want to be putting undue pressure onto the actual metal of the bridge I want to make sure that's perfectly aligned and then with gentle pressure As simple as that, you can see that bushing has popped out. So, and unlike a staking set, it's, it's not hollow all the way through. So we need to shake that out of there. And here is the stainless steel bushing, which will be directly replaced with the jewel. The next step is going to be, I'm going to take the spade bit and just very very gently run that around just in case there's any rough sections or burrs so just the gentlest run around to remove any burrs and give that a blow with the puffer and I'll just take a look and that looks good no rough edges there that's fine and then the next step is to get the jewel the replacement jewel which we will fit in place a line and then that will be pressed in gradually until it seats this jewel into the hole so here's the replacement jewel there's the bushing and there's the jewel that it's going to replace or oh, rather there's there's the jewel that's going to replace it and this likewise should measure in at exactly 2.4 millimeters and I've already measured these so I know that it does these are very very well made very accurate and very nice looking they appear to be the same on both sides I will have another double check actually I tell a lie and correct myself there the larger one does appear to have a flatter side and one with a very, very slight bevel. Um, so I need to just double check to see if that has to go in a specific way. Having re-reviewed the directions and uh, looking at this, the general consensus from um, from Adrian at VTA is it really doesn't matter which way around however uh, my I suppose OCD to a degree and my my nature of, uh, of what I've done before tells me that the beveled edge needs to go uppermost to the train side because this effectively becomes an oil sink it's where you, you were where you would actually apply the tip of your oiler and the oil would fill the well of the bevel which in turn would keep it in there whereas the directly flat edge is less likely to take up the oil so for that reason 
that's the direction that I am going to fit it. This kind of thing is a little bit of trial and error. So as I said before, this is not really a tutorial such, this is just me finding my way into this. I've adjusted the pusher so that it is the thickness of the plate. It will close down and it will just grip the plate as you can see, like so. The idea being I cannot physically force that further, but because I've got a larger pusher on there, it will also be stopped by the plate. It, it physically cannot push it through and, uh, and risk cracking the jewel. What I want to do is, is hold this round here so that you, it's, you've got unobstructed uh, visibility, as it were. So I need to check again, which is the beveled and which is the flat side. So that's the bevel and that's the almost flat side. So I need to place this in here like so. And this should simply press straight in. I'm being extra cautious here because using the correct sized pusher means that you can actually see the edges using a slightly oversized one means that you can't and you are in a manner of speaking flying blind so that does appear to be going in and I can see and just feel with my fingernail that that's not perfectly flush what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the handle and I'm going to use a technique that I have used with other jeweling tools. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, but it's doable. And it involves pressing, I'll actually show you what I'm doing with my right hand in a moment once I've done this, but it involves pressing the plunger with your right hand and very, very gently adjusting the micrometric uh, adjuster to allow you to make incremental movements until we have got a flush fitting jewel. To show what was going on when I was pressing that in before, I removed the handle as you can see there, and essentially with pressing with your finger and using your thumb and your middle finger, you turn the micrometric adjustment while applying pressure like so. You turn this micrometric adjustment just bit by bit by bit until you feel that bottom out and that allows you to apply gentle and even pressure. This is the barrel arbor that we're going to be reaming it out and it's going to be fitted on this seat like so because this seat, uh, if I fit my hand through there, I'm trying to not obscure your view if I can help it, um, it's very tricky. So if I can get that in the right place, there is a, there we go, right there. There is an indent that where that becomes perfectly flat, like so. And you can actually feel, if you rock that around side to side, you can feel where that is flat. And apologies if I'm going to get my hands in the way a little bit here, but I, I just can't do it that way around. I might actually see if I can move the camera to the other side for you. Uh, I think that might be a better idea. But in essence, this is what's going to happen. It's going to sit nice and square on there. And while that's nice and squarely sat on this hollow stump, I will start to applying gradual pressure, I will start bringing the reamer down and reaming out the barrel arbor hole to accept the replacement jewel. Uh, you can probably see, uh, if I move that out of the way, you can maybe see on there, there's already some light detritus on there. So it's uh, it'll be a good idea to keep checking and cleaning this because brass does tend to gall a little bit. And I've discovered from working it on the lathe. 
obviously there's much much more heat generated on a lathe and while it's a soft metal and it cuts easily it does tend to gall a little um, and for that reason it's uh, it's a good idea to to clear it occasionally and make sure that nothing is causing a problem hopefully that's a little bit more visible and I can demonstrate there the the fact that that's level as I have to, I have to physically lift one edge or the other but if I rock that like that that's I can tell that that's level and flat to that stump and then if I without trying to obscure the light just applying slight downward pressure and you can see that's actually almost through now then we'll continue through into the round section like so and that's gone all the way through I'm just going to draw that up he says it really doesn't help when you try to work around a camera but if you bear with me let me just quickly clean off the brooch um, or reamer um, yes it just dropped through and to the to the point where the top is tapered is um, it had kind of locked itself onto that so apologies for that but as you can see I'm just going to run run that through again so just uh, once more get that so that it's centered on that stump like so and it's flat and level and then you can see that the whole thing goes right the way through right the way through to the round section which is the smoothing brooch and that's 1.59 millimeters which now gives us the perfect dimensions for fitting the new jewel but before we do that I will need to chamfer the edges there's a very noticeable burr on the underside where the actual barrel arbor goes so using this drill bit by hand and just going to make a little chamfer and remove the burr and it doesn't take much doesn't take much effort at all now really I should have done this over at my bench where my lathe is because obviously there are now bits of brass filings and such so I'll have to clean my bench down before I do go ahead and do anything else with this movement apologies if this video is dark it's looking a bit dark on the preview screen hopefully when I can get that into editing it won't look quite so bad so let's check that with a fingernail and there's still some rough burrs there I think I'm just going to use the larger bit to make a yeah, that's better I can actually feel that cutting a, a cleaner chamfer much better yes still just a very little one on that edge there excellent that's perfect just give that a blow out and a dab with some Rodico to make sure that that's completely clear and we've got a larger hole there and I'm going to repeat that same process on the other side this one of course is not quite so crucial with regards to uh, to being as perfect because this is on the dial side where the calendar works are and it will not be interfering directly with anything but I do want it to be neat enough down here at the final hurdle we've got the smaller 
of the two barrel arbor jewels in place ready to be pressed in we've got the same pump pusher and stump set up as previously i've aligned this and squared it up as best i'm able like so and then it's a case of applying a little bit of gentle pressure and allowing that to find its level so that I can press that in. I will say, just, just to make a note of it, I, uh, I'm gonna try and put my hand around this side so maybe it won't obscure the light as much and you might be able to see a little better. Um, I did notice on this smaller one that there was less of a difference between sides, both sides seeming to be slightly beveled, but the what seemed to be the more prominent of the two bezels I am fitting with that so it's more prominent on the dial side to act as an oil sink for the arbor um, as I mentioned for the train side so this has been set up so that it will only press as far as the thickness of the, the plate and I won't I can't press that any harder again for reasons of uh, not trying not to damage the jewel and that looks like that's gone in and seated. As you can see, that's that's firmly pressed onto there. So there we have a 19 joule 6139, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to give that a close inspection. And what I will do at this point is I'm going to cut this video because, um, as I say, I, I had to use this setup through necessity. And then I can revert to my decent camera and lens and show you close ups of this, uh, of both the train bridge and the main plate. And we're going to fit the barrel and the train bridge just quickly for test purposes, as it were. And take a look at that and look at that that's that's a thing of beauty that is uh, we have now got a beautifully rotating this is going to be really hard to see again I'll show this on on the better camera with the with the better lens under better lighting so you can see this but that is running super super smooth I'm really really pleased with that the only thing that remains to show now is the jeweled barrel arbor plates and there's the train and barrel bridge with its jewel in there as you can see if we lift this away and just move that in there so you can see that focused for you from both sides and although it will be difficult oops get that in the frame there we go although it'll be difficult to tell this side is the slightly flatter side and this is pressed in so that this is smooth across here so there's no noticeable uh, step and the jewel isn't sticking out and what I can do then once fitted is check the actual end shake of the barrel and if need be I can adjust those jewels in or out a little accordingly we'll just pop the barrel away there and there you can see the main plate and the jewel fitted in there as mentioned during the fitting this one had a much less obvious um, difference between the two where are we there we go and let's uh, see if I can sorry that's catching the glare of the light there let's see if I can focus that so that just gives you an idea of how that looks once in place and what it does is eliminates all of the slop I'll just pop this back on and flip it over so you can see because it's the other side that's the most troublesome um, although technically both could wear but obviously the the main plate side is is going to be logically the most troublesome because 
it's just plated brass. So this here is the one that you will see most of the slop in. And although it's hard to see, but I, I physically cannot get any side to side movement from that at all. So as you can see, that's the arbor fitted through the jewel there. Uh, this is a little awkward because I'm actually trying to look at the screen to see where where I'm pointing to see. But that's a nice, nice secure fit. And that barrel rotates nice and smoothly. So there we go. Uh, as mentioned early on in the video, it is a long one, but what I wanted to do was to cover in as much detail as possible. So apologies for those of you who are familiar with dueling tools and their use, but I wanted to try and cover in as much detail as I possibly could so that anybody who's actually new to this and never so much as seen a dueling tool will have an idea of how the tool works and how to use one to go ahead and acquire one to do this job for themselves on their own 6139 or any other watch for that matter. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.